Hello and welcome back to the course on machine learning. Today we've got a very interesting topic. Today we're talking about Thomson sampling and the algorithm's intuition. And uh, again, we're going to be using this algorithm to solve the multi-armed bandit problem. All right, so let's get started. A quick refresher on that multi-armed bandit problem. We have several slot machines. Uh, each one of them has a distribution behind it, D1 to D5. We don't know what these distributions are and we need to start playing these machines and at the same time figure out which one has the best distribution so that we then exploit that best distribution. Um, and what, But uh, it'll take us some time to figure it out, so we need to maximize our return during the process of figuring it out. So we have to uh, find that ideal balance or trade-off between exploration and exploitation. Um, we had a few tutorials previously on... Uh, these things. So we talked about the multi-armed bandit problem in a lot of detail. So if you haven't watched that tutorial, highly recommend jumping into the previous section and watching it there. Also, um, understanding of the upper confidence bound algorithm will really help you grasp the concepts of uh, Thompson sampling. So if you haven't uh, seen the upper confidence bound uh, tutorial, then I highly recommend checking that out before proceeding with today's lecture. All right, so let's get started. A quick summary of the multi-arm bandit problem uh, is as follows. We have D arms, for example, arms are ads that we display to users each time they uh, connect to a web page. So by the way, yes, uh, indeed, um, a modern application of the mo or modern representation of the multi-armed bandit problem is advertising. So when you display ads, um, that is very similar uh, or the algorithms that we're going to be applying can learning uh, can be applied to solving that problem where you're displaying ads. So if you go back here, instead of having uh, these slot machines, each one of these is a different ad, and you want to figure out which one of these ads is the best performing ad, but you don't have time to do an A-B test, so you don't have the funds or the resources to do an A-B test, you want to figure it out on the fly. That's when you would apply uh, one of these algorithms that we're talking about in this part of the course. Um, and of course, there's of uh, other lots of other modern problems that are very similar to the multi-armed bandit problem, and therefore these algorithms uh, are valid for them too. All right, so moving back here. So we've got uh, D-ARMS, for example, ARMS are ads that we display to users each time they connect to a web page, each time a user connects to this page. Uh, that is uh, considered as a round at each round, and we choose which ad to display to the user. At each round n, the ad gives us a reward, either 0 or 1, one if the ad is clicked, zero if the ad is not clicked. In the case of the actual bandits, it'll be a monetary reward, so it won't be just zero to one, it'll be some value. Um, our goal is to maxi maximize the total reward we get over many rounds. All right, so that's a quick uh, overview of the problem that we're solving. Uh, then here we've got uh, some very complex looking mathematics and Bayesian inference and all these um, distributions and posterior probability and other uh, prior distributions and beta distributions and so on. Um, we're not going to delve deep into this right now. So Hadlan will uh, take some time to walk through this slide with you in the practical tutorials because uh, we're going to be coding this um, from scratch, uh, well, at least in R. And um, therefore, he will actually walk you through this slide our goal for today is to understand the intuition behind all of these things. So we're going to skip, skip the slide and get to the intuition part. And this is the actual steps that uh, you're going to be using in uh, the practical tutorial. So again, uh, Hadlan will walk you through this slide as well. And today we're talking about the intuition. So this is going to be fun. This is some interesting slides coming up and uh, get ready for a fun ride. So grab your cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and or even some popcorn, and uh, let's get started. All right, so here we've got a scale. Uh, the Y, or the horizontal axis, is the return, the return that we expect to get from a bandit. So we're going to look at a simplified problem. We're going to look at rather than five or even 10. We're going to just look at three bandits because there's going to be a lot of stuff going on on this uh, chart, and I don't want to clutter it up, and we want to keep it as simple as possible just so that we can understand the concept, and then... Uh, the same thing applies for five or ten or however many um, machines that uh, you'd be looking at. So here we've got the return. And these vertical lines, just like in the case 
uh, of uh, the upper confidence bound, we had the horizontal lines. These vertical lines ex um, represent the expected return for each of the machines. So uh, each of the machines, out of the three machines that we have, each of the machines has a distribution behind it so that the result, the amount of money that you win per game is picked as a random value from that distribution. Uh, and we're not going to draw the distribution, but basically just imagine a distribution behind each one of these um, uh, expected values. So this is this is just the center of that distribution or uh, the actual expected return from that machine. And we're just visualizing it here, but this is us kind of like looking into uh, in, into the actual machine itself, or like pulling it apart and knowing how it works, or being the designer of the machine. In reality, when you're playing these machines, of course you don't know this. So this is some additional information that will guide us, that will help us understand how the algorithm actually works. The algorithm itself doesn't know this information, right? So this is hidden, but it's just there for us so that we can better understand what's going on. So these are the expected returns, the actual expected returns of each of the machines. And obviously, if you knew this right away, you would say that machine number three or the yellow machine is the best one uh, because it has the highest return, right? It, ha it has the highest expected return. You'd always just bet on this one. But again, you don't know this yet. Um, all right, so what happens uh, with this algorithm? Well, uh, at the start, just like with the upper confidence bound algorithm, you don't know anything, right? You have no prior knowledge of the... Uh, current uh, situation or status of things and therefore all the machines are identical to you and you have to have at least one or even a couple of trial rounds just to get some data to analyze and so let's see let's say that has happened there are some uh, trial runs for uh, the some for machine number one or the blue machine and um, based on those trial runs the algorithm the Thompson sampling algorithm, this is where it starts getting different to the upper confidence bound, will construct a distribution, right? So we'll get to this distribution in a second, what it means. But for now, let's just do the same thing for machine, the green machine. And so again, we're just pulling the arm several times, like four times, for instance, and we're getting some values and uh, are, that are going to be somewhere around, obviously, the actual expected return right and based on that and based on those values of course it's probably going to be a bit more than four uh, we're constructing some sort of distribution or some sort of perception of the current state of things and this is the part where it gets interesting so the actual meaning of this these distributions is not what you might think at first so um, these distributions are actually showing us or they're representing not the we're not trying to guess the distributions behind the machine. So the first thing that might come to mind is that, all right, so we've constructed distribution, and so the blue distribution is our attempt at guessing the actual distribution behind the blue machine, right? The distribution that this is the expected return for. And the green is for the green machine, the yellow is for the yellow machine. Well, actually not. That's not the case. We are constructing something completely different something completely out of this world, we're constructing distributions of where we think the actual expected value might lie. It's very important to understand that. So uh, we are creating uh, kind of a, uh, if, you, if you want to think of it that way, we're creating an auxiliary mechanism for us to solve the problem. So uh, we're, not, we're not trying to recreate these machines, we're recreating the possible way these machines could have been created, kind of in that sense. So let's uh, let's uh, just solidify that. This is where we think the expected, the actual expected values will be. So let's look at the blue one, for instance. We got four values, and based on those four values, we've constructed this distribution, which will show us, which is showing us um, where is that value mu star? So this is mu star, the actual mu star, but we don't know it, so the algorithm doesn't know it. So it's constructed a distribution trying to guess where this value is. And of course, can't just say it's over here, or it's over there, it's over there. It's saying, okay, there's a there's a very high likelihood it's over here, but it also could be here, it could be here, it could be here. And as you move away, the likelihood drops, but it still could be anywhere in this blue space. Same for the thing for the green um, distribution. So based on the values that we've seen, uh, the random values that have been selected in the four four rounds, um, the algorithm has created this distribution, which is saying that this actual 
um, actual expected return from machine from the green machine is somewhere in this area, and it's most likely to be here. But it could be here, it could be here, it could be here, it could be anywhere. It could be so basically, it most it's most likely to be here. Then it could be here, it could be here, and as you move away, the, sh the likelihood of it actually being there drops off. Same thing for the yellow one. So it's very important to understand. So just to reiterate, we are not trying to guess the distributions behind the machines, right? We are um, doing like kind of a, a little magic trick or a little uh, hat, uh, hat trick. Is it? I don't know if it's called a hat trick, but we're trying to um, do this, this create this perception of the world. We're trying to... Um, mathematically explain what we think is actually going on or what could be going on. And that is uh, that is important, um, also important thing because this demonstrates that the Thomson sampling is a probabilistic algorithm. The upper confidence bound was a deterministic algorithm where everything was strict. You know, it, everything was, okay, so whichever one has a highest upper confidence bound, that's the one we're going to choose, and so on. But here we're creating a probabilistic uh, perception of the world. We're saying, so it's likely to be here, but it could be anywhere in this blue area. And this one could be anywhere in this green, and so on. And you'll see exactly why we've done this. In the next slide, we'll understand how this works. And let's jump straight into that. Let's understand uh, now that this is probably the hardest part to kind of uh, get your head around what we've created. And now that we've created it, let's see how the algorithm is going to uh, utilize this uh, auxiliary mechanism that we have created. All right, so let's have a look. So there are our distributions. That's where we think. So these are the actual expected returns for each of the machines. But the algorithm doesn't know them. The old algorithm has created is are these distributions where which allow it to kind of guess where uh, the actual distribution might lie for each of, each of these machines. So what it's going to do is it's actually going to trigger each of these distributions. So uh, like we're in the new, we're in a new round, we have to choose a machine to use. So what the, the algorithm will do is it will go and call uh, this distribution and it will pull out a value out of this distribution. And let's say it pulled that value. Then it'll pull a value out of the green distribution. Let's say it pulled that value out of the green distribution. And let's say, it, and then pulls a value out of the yellow distribution. Let's say it's that distribution, uh, that value. And again, it's pulling them so according to the distribution, right? So this is a distribution of values. So basically, it's uh, most likely to pull a value uh, somewhere in this area, then less likely in uh, further away you go, it's more less, less, and less likely. But still, it can happen that you can see that see, this yellow value is actually quite far from the center, but it still can happen that it pulled this value out of distribution. And it can happen that it picked this green value out of the green distribution. Totally can happen. In the long term, of course, you're going to be picking somewhere close to the center, like over the long run. Um, but on a one-off basis, it, this can totally happen. And so now it's picked these values and guess what that means. Well, what this actually means is that we have, by doing that, we have generated our own bandit configuration. So we have created a th this um, hypothetical or imaginary um, um, batch of machines, or not batch, imaginary set of machines in our own virtual world where we're saying, okay, so the expected, the actual expected um, return for the blue machine is this value. The actual expected return for the green machine is this value. And the actual expected return for the yellow machine is this value. So we've created this uh, pseudo, pseudo world or hypothetical virtual reality in which we have our own three bandits. And now we're going to solve this problem. Uh, the, and it's, this problem is very easy to solve. It's, it's obvious how to solve this problem. You just pick this machine, right? Because this machine has the highest expected return out of the three. And obviously, you're just going to go with this machine in the virtual world, in the um, pseudo, pseudo reality. And uh, what uh, that means is that now we translate this result into the actual world, in the virtual um, uh, hypothetical world, we've selected the green machine. So in the actual world, the, uh, the algorithm will also select the green machine and what that will do, so it will basically pull the lever for this machine, right? And what that will do is actually it will um, give us a value, so the machine will spit, a value, spit out a value, but that value is going to be based on the distribution behind this machine, where this is the actual expected value of that distribution. So the value is going to be somewhere here.
probably close to the actual expected value. It doesn't have to be. Again, there's a distribution behind all this. It could be far away, it could be close, but let's say in this case, it's this one. All right, so now this information, this is new information to the algorithm. What it's going to do is it's going to say, uh huh, okay, so the, I pulled the green uh, lever, the lever for the green machine, I got this value. So now I have to adjust my perception of the world, right? So I have a um, prior probability. So these are my, uh, or for the green machine, this is my prior uh, distribution. This is where the Bayesian inference comes into play, or it's, it's already been in play, and this is where we're adding to the Bayesian inference. So that's our prior probability, prior distribution. Now we've got some new information. This is our new information. We're going to add it in and see what see how that changes our perception of the world. Well, our perception of the world has changed. The uh, distribution has shifted a bit, and it's become um, narrower because we have more information. We our sample size has increased. Of course. Excuse me. Of course, it's not going to increase that that much. Uh, this is just an example to uh, demonstrate what we're talking about to get the point across. But that's that's the point that uh, every time we add new information, our distribution becomes more and more refined. All right. So now we have a new perception of the world. Now what happens next is a new round. Right. Same thing. We're going to do the same thing again for a new round. Again, uh, we generate or we pick some values out of our distributions. There they are. Um, now we've constructed a, or we've generated our own banded configuration in our virtual, uh, virtual reality, or in our uh, hypothetical world. Out of these three, we have to pick the best banded, which is of course the one here, the yellow banded, and we're going to uh, now pull, the, actually pull in the real world, pull the uh, lever of the yellow banded, or the algorithm is going to do that. That's going to trigger the distribution behind the yellow banded, and that will give us some sort of value. So this is the actual value that we received in the real world. Now we're gonna incorporate that value into our perception of the world and our perception of the world is going to change. It's gonna adjust. There we go. Now we're going to do that again. All right, so let's, let's just do this one more time just so we practice the logic behind all of this. So a new round generates uh, the uh, generates the banded configuration, right? So this is what we're going to think that our um, expected, actual expected returns are going to be. Our banded configuration, this is obviously the best one. Uh, we're going to use, uh, pull the yellow machine's lever. That's going to trigger the distribution behind the yellow machine. It's going to spit out a value in the real world. There's a value. And then we're going to have to adjust our perception of the world again to match the or to incorporate the new information and so on. We're going to keep doing that until uh, we get to a point where we've refined the distributions substantially and the picture looks like this. So uh, they might be refined even more. This one might be more refined. This one might be more refined. But as you could see from there, uh, we slowly will start generating more and more rounds based on the yellow machine will be triggering the yellow machine. So these ones might not even get that refined in the long run which is totally fine because our point is to get to the best machine to find it and exploit it as much as we can. So there we go. That is pretty much how the Thompson sampling algorithm works. And as you can see, it is a uh, probabilistic algorithm. And uh, every time we're generating these values, uh, they are, uh, we're kind of creating this hypothetical uh, setup of the bandits and then we're solving that and then we're applying the results to the real world we're adjusting our perception of reality based on the new information that that generates and then we're doing that again so hopefully this was a uh, interesting uh, tutorial i find this uh, algorithm very very cool and in the next tutorial we're going to compare um, a little bit the upper confidence bound and the thompson sampling algorithm and i can't wait to see you there until next time happy analyzing